Big Pharma is terrified of vitamin D3. They have great influence over universities, especially Harvard University. Harvard will not publish anything positive about vitamin D. The question is why? Because it competes directly with Big Pharma. Many, many, many conditions that Big Pharma treats can be inexpensively corrected with vitamin D. Let's just start with the precursor for vitamin D, cholesterol. The precursor to make vitamin D has also been attacked. This is seed oils, right? Heart healthy. Why? because it doesn't have any cholesterol. It's cholesterol free. What about the sun? Has anyone ever told you to stay out of the sun? You're gonna get skin cancer. I'm gonna share some interesting data with you. There's two main big pharma companies, Leo Pharma and another one that's called Almirol. Both of these pharmaceutical companies specialize in dermatology, skin related issues. Both of these companies had developed products in the past that had the ingredients of synthetic vitamin D. One drug, they combined vitamin D with corticosteroid cream. Another drug was just vitamin D. And what were these for? Skin problems. These are the two companies that started this sun phobia, stay out of the sun campaign while they sell you their vitamin D products. Out of all the remedies that you can do for eczema and psoriasis, the sun is one of the best remedies and it causes the cholesterol in your skin to turn into vitamin D, the most dangerous skin cancer, really stemming from a vitamin D deficiency. It usually originates in areas that are not exposed to the sun. You really need at least 10,000 IUs every single day to maintain a healthy vitamin D level. Every aspect of your immune system has receptors for vitamin D. Back in the early 1900s, we had sanitariums all over the world to get sunbathing, sun treatment. They would basically lay out the sun to prevent TB and to handle various health conditions until we developed something called antibiotics. And then you saw those sanitariums go away. The amount of corruption and influence of big pharma has been widespread ever since that period of time. I want you to hear a very short clip by Dr. William Grant, who has done extensive research in the area of vitamin D. It's interesting to look at the number of papers published on vitamin D to give you an idea of how important vitamin D uh, is. According to PubMed.gov, there have been 84,532 papers published with vitamin D in the title on or abstract as of February 18, 2024 including 4668 in 2024. The rate of publication has been greater than 4,000 papers per year starting in 2014. Thus, it is the most studied bioactive molecule. Despite this record, there's still controversy regarding its health benefits. Why the controversy? Well, Big Pharma and the, the, the medical system are not happy with vitamin D because it reduces their income and profits. I listened to a presentation about the disinformation playbook by a, a representative of the Union Concerned Scientists and learn about the five pillars of the playbook. Uh, these play, uh, pillars include the fake, where counterfeit science is conducted and is trying to pa be passed off as legitimate research. The main example of this for vitamin D is all the government-sponsored vitamin D randomized controlled trials, which are designed based on guidelines for pharmaceutical drugs, not nutrients. And as a result, they don't show any benefit of vitamin D. Then there's the blitz, harassing scientists who speak out with results or views inconvenient for industry. Back in 2018, there was a big hit piece on Michael Hollick in the New York Times saying, well, he can't be trusted because he took money from indoor tanning industry and the supplement industry. Come on, give me a break. The diversion, manufacture uncertainty about science where little or none exists again, using uh, the results from clinical trials to counter the results from observational studies. Uh, fourth, the screen, they buy credibility through alliances with academia or professional societies. Well, Big Pharma funds all the uni medical universities to fund clinical trials, gives them lots of money, and encourages them to ignore vitamin D. And all your uh, uh, disease organizations uh, take money from Big Pharma and, of course, represent their interests and, and um, are more interested in maintaining a, a, a membership base of people with, with disease rather than curing them. Finally, there is the fix, manipulating government officials or processes to influence policy inappropriately. As is well known, the Centers for Disease Control in the United States, the Food and Drug Administration, and the National Institutes of Health 
have had major influence from Big Pharma. That has changed in 2024, and this should result in changes regarding the acceptance of vitamin D. There's tens of thousands of research studies on what vitamin D can do for cancer. I mean, it's not a trickle of research. It's a flood of research. And that's just cancer. Vitamin D doesn't just help cancer one way. It's many different ways. A lot of the research that shows that vitamin D doesn't help are on purpose. In other words, I think Big Pharma has influenced a lot of the research on these topics. All you have to do to sort that out is to look at the studies that don't show a favorable outcome. And almost in every one of those studies, the amount of vitamin D that they use is so tiny. And when you use just small amounts of vitamin D, you're not gonna be able to create the effects. Dr. Coimbra from Brazil, who developed the Coimbra protocol for autoimmune diseases, the results of using high doses of vitamin D3, it's in the 90 percentile as far as effectiveness. And in a recent interview, which I will post, he told me this, that there's something called vitamin D resistance. And this has to do with a genetic issue with vitamin D. If your genes have some type of problem, you are vulnerable to having a vitamin D deficiency because there really is no test that you can know for sure if the vitamin D in your blood is going deep into the tissues, into the cells. You may be seriously deficient or vulnerable to having an immune problem like some autoimmune disease. This is also why it's so important to make sure that your vitamin D is at least 50 nanograms per milliliter. I'll put the link down below where you can order a kit and you do a little blood spot on a piece of paper, send it in, and you can find out your vitamin D levels. I think a lot of people have a problem with vitamin D just because their genetics are not allowing them to absorb vitamin D. Even from the standpoint of what vitamin D does for inflammation, it can greatly reduce inflammation. It's one of the most potent anti-inflammatories to protect you from getting cancer, as well as you know viruses and things like that. Cod liver oil also has a good amount of vitamin D. One tablespoon of cod liver oil can give you 10,000 IUs of vitamin D3. That's 20 minutes in the sun. If you haven't had your vitamin D tested, it'd probably be a good idea to get it tested. And if you want more information about doing a home test, I will put that link down below. But ideally, I would recommend to make sure your levels are above 50 nanograms per milliliter. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide. Major updates on the body types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to the Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto intermittent fasting. This is the shortcut, a uh, quick guide 
to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you, within 45 minutes, learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.